Hordes of monsters poured out of the Earth's steps from ordinary mines. Millions of people have been killed, as well as cities were destroyed. With all these monsters, a real war began, and they were eventually exterminated. Defensive structures have been built on the site of the former wells. Gates designed to protect people from repeated interferences were built. It's been 15 years. The world was able to recover somewhat from the ordeal. Laura is one of the people who were blessed enough to survive. She is employed at the school. She possesses Milton, is an unsuccessful male friend, with whom she refuses dates on a regular basis. The main reason for this is bitterness against her ex-husband, Dave. He was not present with Laura on the Day of Judgment, and she had to survive by herself as she was pregnant. Dave and Laura have one 15-year-old son called Tyler. He spends the entire day at the skate park with his friends and his girlfriend, Maddie. In his spare time, he enjoys computer games and serves as a bargaining chip in his father and mother's complex relationship, which ended shortly after his birth. Meanwhile, things are heating up. An eclipse is approaching, and it is one of the signs of the end of the world. A potential monster invasion furthermore, seismic activities have increased, necessitating the deployment of protective dome personnel. Are carrying out emergency checks, and there is troubling media in the media this same extinction of fish started showing up everywhere. The same situation occurred the day before the first day of judgment. Tyler is at his father's house for the weekend when the phone rings. Dave receives a phone call from an old friend. He is certain that the next judgment day will take place tomorrow. It is adamant that Dave take the entire family and get to his hideout before the eclipse. Meanwhile, the first creature emerges from beneath a protective dome. Slipping up the stairs stealthily, Laura calls Dave at this point. She has also heard the news and insists that Dave return Tyler to her. Milton has secured a hideout and she is convinced that it is the only way to save them. Dave convinces her that he is Tyler's father, and that he is safe with him. Tyler receives a text message, reads it, and silently exits the home as his father speaks. Laura is worried since Dave's apartment is not safe, and he needs to get Tyler to her right now. Dave concurs. He enters Tyler's room, but he is not there. Note to Laura, because the hideout is filling up fast, and they need to get there soon. She says that she is unable to locate Tyler. Milton locates him at the skate park using his phone number. Tyler is truly present with Maddie. She is scared since her parents had left her alone. She is terrified and begs Tyler not to abandon her. Tyler pledges that he would never do that he will not abandon Maddie. A bird call is heard loudly, and enormous flocks of birds fly in one direction. People in the park flee in terror. Dave travels to the park to seek Tyler after everyone else has left town. It is stuck in traffic and hurries to find his son, leaving the vehicle behind. The worker is checking the devices under the dome. There's a rustling and some odd noises. A monster comes and rips the worker apart. The troops are stationed close to fire at it, but it is unharmed by regular bullets. Tyler and Maddie are shocked by the prevailing panic. Dave rushes over as Tyler explains to his father that Maddie has nowhere to go and that he couldn't abandon her. Laura arrives with Milton and drives everyone to the shelters where the seats have been arranged. The eclipse will begin in slightly over an hour. The city is in full disarray. People are attempting to flee, and all the roads are blocked by cars everywhere. They eventually get to the shelter, but it is blocked off by the soldiers, and only women and children are allowed in. Dave requests Tyler to look after his mom, and rushes them to the shelter. She and Milton stay in the crowd. Tyler enters the shelter before fleeing to his father. Laura and Maddie follow him. Tyler cries, He is my father, and I will not abandon him. At this point, the scoreboard indicates that the shelter is totally full. With no more spaces available, they rush to the car, wasting no time. Dave offers to travel to Ted's desert hideout, but Milton advises sheltering at the nearby high school, which has a basement. Another traffic jam with hundreds of vehicles blocking the route. They exit the vehicle. An earthquake occurs, and the solar disk is obscured by a shadow. The eclipse has started. The creatures emerge from behind the protective dome. Their hordes, crawling and flying, engulf the city. Dave advises fleeing the city since it is far more unsafe here. He tries to drive himself, but... Milton is furious because this is his car. But suddenly a flying creature grabs Milton and lifts him into the sky. Laura shouts heartbreakingly. Dave inserts her into the vehicle, and they attempt to escape this misery. They are driving along the canal. Dave tries to convince the kids that everything is all right. We will leave. The car's petrol tank is nearly empty. Dave is looking for an alternative. There are numerous vehicles ahead. Dave jumps inside one of the vehicles. In the passenger seat, an old guy hid. He casts a peek at a massive bleeding monstrosity that resembles a bull's skeleton. The bull walks right past the car and starts chewing on the lame body. Dave drives the vehicle back to Laura and the kids silently. Both vehicles are now parked next to each other, yet they have to move to a newer one. However, the bull became aware of them.
The old man then gets out of his vehicle and sprinkles the bowl with salt from the container in his hands. When the bowl comes to a halt, both kids and Laura manage to collide with Dave's car. The bowl then charges at the old man, tearing him to bits. However, Dave is able to get away from there. Vast numbers of creatures attack the city from each and every direction. They make their way up to Ted's hideaway. It is extremely strong and resembles a brick building. There is CCTV on the roof, but nobody responds when they knock since the doors are shut. Ted is seated behind the display, a pistol around his neck, and someone stands behind him. A group of creatures runs down the mountain. They run to the nearest cover. Dave takes an iron bar in an attempt to defend the family. However, the bunker's doors are open at the very last second, and they go inside. Dave joyfully hugs Ted, as his wife Stella is inside the vault, and a former soldier sits at the side. The cameras show the creatures attempting to hit the door. Everyone is nervous, and Garrett remains silent. Maddie wonders how the monsters see them and whether they could see through the walls. Garrett grins, but I believe they can see human souls. They are the devil's children, which implies God as well. They torture the physical while feeding on the soul. He claims to have worked in a refinery during the first judgment day. When the monsters flooded in, he decided to dive into something like a salty mud pond where the creatures were terrified to come. He sat in the mud and watched as the creatures slaughtered 150 of his co-workers and friends. Garrett is so interested in his storytelling that he misses Ted indicating Dave to grab the knife. Dave understands and lifts the knife calmly. At this point, a creature that looks like a centipede slides from the street into a tiny hole inside the mesh sealing the window. Garrett says he'll go for duty initially. Ted asks them to remain as well and glances thoughtfully at Dave. But suddenly Garrett removes the pistol from its holster, compelling Dave to put away the knife. Garrett says that he sought to hide and heed to this hideaway. Ted was opposed, but Stella allowed him in. He escaped the first time, and he will escape again, no regardless of what it takes. Tyler lunges towards Garrett, attempting to steal the gun from him. Garrett, on the other hand, pushes him away. A centipede-like creature comes out of the nowhere at Stella. Ted pulls the creature off his wife's neck and puts salt on it, and Dave steals a pistol from Garrett and fires it. They bind Garrett and attempt to block Stella's blood flow. Then Dave sees support arrive for the creatures in the form of a massive bull. He realizes they are trapped, and that they must escape the bunker. The bull is attempting to break down the doors. Ted refuses to walk outside, fearing that his wife would die if he does, but Stella encourages him to follow everyone. There is a hidden passage beneath the bunker that reaches the mountains. Garrett manages to convince him to join them. He has a car with a tank of fuel and can drive everyone to the gates. There are tunnels and the monsters have fled, and they will never return. They don't trust him, but he keeps insisting he was simply trying to stay alive. They make the decision to leave. Dave tells Garrett that if we make it there, we'll forget about it all. Ted has an inventory of weaponry, so they equip themselves. The bull continues to smash the doors, but they are able to flee into the tunnel. Stella falls unwell as they walk to the car. Dave and Laura start arguing, and she reminds him that they might be at the shelter right now. Tyler then comes into a monster at the corner of the road. It's no longer alive. Maddie goes up to it. Long tentacles sprout from a hole in the floor and snake between her legs, attempting to take her away. Maddie cries as Tyler and Dave come to her assistance. Garrett offers his assistance, and Dave cuts the cords around his hands. They climb to the peak of the mountain. They witness a city in ruins and on fire. They walk towards the car, but it refuses to start. Monsters arrive on the mountain's slope and charge directly toward them. Stella glances at the swarm of monsters, then at the pistol in her husband's hands, as Garrett struggles to start the vehicle. Ted urges her to hand up the gun when she pulls it and gets out of the car. Yet Stella turns aside and walks to the monsters. Ted calls her and cries, but Dave tries to put him into the car. They escape at the last possible minute. Crowds of creatures chase them. They pick the radio frequency on the way. They say that practically all of the bunkers were destroyed, since they were unable to survive the attack. Laura places a hand on Dave's shoulder while he rubs her. They approach the gate. Garrett claims that the hideaway is located in the basement. They're on their way, but the electricity must be restored first. Garrett and Dave agree to do it while the rest go in search of the first aid area. Ted seems to have a wounded in his back. Dave turns on the power. They walk to the others, and suddenly they hear a creature growl and find a bleeding body. There are two hours till the eclipse ends. Garrett suggests hiding in a chemical factory with unbreakable doors. Suddenly, a monster strikes Garrett. Garrett and Dave manage to deal with it. But the remaining monsters flee in response to the noises. Garrett dashes into a door and shuts it. He gives some type of medication to himself, his veins are bloated and dark. Dave arrives and requests Tyler to keep his mom safe while he is absent. He plans to equalize the playing field and keep the monsters away by funneling salt water via the tank pipes. Laura kisses Dave 
and warns him to be cautious. Dave moves his way through all the vents and watches the creature devouring its prey. Dave must turn off the water near the eating monster. He succeeds in opening the valve, and water is gathered in containers. Dave jumps back, however. The monster detects this and charges toward him. Dave makes a comeback by sprinkling salt on it, and the creature falls to dust. Meantime, the others were caught and trapped by monsters. Tyler fires back. Then Dave's voice can be heard over the loudspeaker, and he requests that the fire extinguisher be activated. The creatures have surrounded them and are coming in on them. Protect the family, son, Ted says Tyler, and swings an axe against the creatures. Several creatures attack him at the same time. Tyler fires back, and a bloody Ted attempts to take revenge. When Tyler runs out of bullets, he activates the fire extinguisher, and sprays of salt water rain down from all sides, screaming in pain as the creatures crumple into bloody ashes. They are rescued, but Ted is no longer alive. The eclipse is over. All creatures return through the gate. Children who have Laura rush out to a location where Garrett is standing with a pistol. He shoots Tyler. This is no longer our world. He won't live anyhow. God has a day off, he adds, aiming once again. Laura attempts to surround her son and her body. Dave rushes in and smacks Garrett across the head with a fire extinguisher. Garrett collapses to the floor, and Dave grabs Tyler and Laura. A massive creature appears from underneath. It leaps towards Garrett, who is getting closer, and eats him entirely. They rush into the medical clinic, prepare a salty combination in a container, and the monster approaches. It kicks out the doors, but Dave managed to hit him with a cylinder of mixture. The creature roars loudly and crumbles to ash as it blasts. Laura hugs Dave. They do not think they have been saved. Both couples greet and walk outdoors. The planet has been ruined, but the creatures have disappeared. Life will be born again. That's it for today's video. Share your thoughts in the comment section below. And also make sure like and subscribe with bell notifications on.